What if GPT-5 could fix its own mistakes before you ever see them? Well, this is the GPT-5 prompting trick that's right in OpenAI's documentation that a lot of people overlook and don't talk about. And it's simple. All you have to do is make GPT-5 create a rubric and then critique its own work against that rubric it created. And then over time, it'll redo its work over and over and over internally and then give you an output that's improved. By adding this minor addition to your prompt, you're likely going to see a massive boost in quality depending on the use case that you have. This is formally called self-reflection prompting. With that being said, let's dive in and see it in action. Okie dokie. So at a high level, what we're gonna do with this trick is we're gonna have GPT-5 check its own work before you actually see it. And the way we're gonna do this is it's gonna have a self-critiquing mechanism in the reasoning process of the model when you put this into your prompt. And it's gonna create a rubric. It's gonna privately redo the takes that it has internally probably five to seven times and then out pops the final output you see, which is going to boost the quality. That's the process we're gonna run through. And there's actually been a lot of research around this technique, and there's been different types of improvements, either five to 40% improvement in quality based off the type of task you're working on. So it could be math, reasoning, uh, analysis tasks, coding, et cetera, but the improvement is there and it's been measured. It also decreases the error rate, such as hallucinations, and like I said previously, this is validated by OpenAI, and they recommend using this prompting technique in their formal documentation. And two additional things I'll call out that are specific to GPT-5 using this technique. Like I said, again, it's in their prompting. So OpenAI has called out this in their prompting guide, but also they've tested this out with O3. So they had their best model in the past, O3 versus GPT-5. And then from this test, they saw that GPT-5 specifically had an improvement on this benchmark, which is an agentic way of coding. And then also Cursor, one of the biggest AI products available today, is utilizing this technique to improve their ability to code. So this is just some specifics around the signal associated to this prompting technique in relation to this model for GPT-5. Now, what does this flow look like? So this is the overall flow for the self-reflection pattern. At the beginning, what's gonna happen is we're gonna give it the prompt, and then what's gonna, what it's gonna do is it's gonna plan. And when it plans, it's going to create itself five to seven because we're gonna set this explicitly and I'll explain why later. Internal categories within a rubric that it judges itself against. So it's create this rubric that has five to seven categories. It'll draft an initial response. So this is the first response based off the task you've given it. And then it's gonna take that rubric that it's created. It's really hard to say fast, so we should slow down. So it's gonna take that rubric that it created and it's going to critique itself against that rubric for the initial draft that was created. It's gonna verify did it meet the expectations for those critiques in the rubric? And an example here is say there's six or say there's three categories and we have to meet each one of these categories at a 90% accuracy rate. So we're going to critique ourselves and say, is this 90% accurate based off of what we've asked in this uh, specific category in the rubric? If not, then do it again for this specific section. And it has to pass 90% on all three categories before you ever move to the next section. And that's the piece here. So once we've critiqued ourselves, we're going to redo this over and over and over between five and seven times. And then finally, we're gonna get the output that's going to show a improved quality response based off the task you've given it. That's the overall flow and how it functions. And this here is the base prompt. So this is a prompt I'd recommend. You can put this in a lot of your system prompts. So if you have a GPT project or a custom GPT, I'd recommend baking this into it to see how it works compared to the previous prompt that you've had for that task. So let's walk through this prompt step-by-step step to break it down and see why it works so well. So but first, we're gonna start with before answering, I want you to create a private rubric that has five to seven items inside of it. And those five to seven items should be associated to the excellence of the tasks that we've given you previously. So we're giving the AI autonomy to decide what those five to seven categories are inside of the rubric it's going to create for itself. You might ask why five to seven? Well, down here, this is the explanation. So we're doing five to seven because oftentimes if you give it the ability to do more than five to seven, it will start to overthink. And if AI overthinks, it overreasons, the intelligence and the response degrades. So we wanna set a cap on the amount of iterations it can do. So we're not enabling the AI to overthink and go in a, in a bad way and degrade its intelligence. So that's the first piece. The second piece here is, okay, now I want you to draft your answer. And when you draft the answer, make sure that you critique yourself against the rubric that was previously created and then redo those previous iterations over and over until it passes each one of the categories you've established in this rubric. Again, we're gonna hear, we're here we're gonna specify the importance of keeping this internal and not showing me anything and only showing me the final result. Part of the reason we're doing that is we want all the tokens that are gonna be generated during inference time to be baked into the reasoning of the model and not be wasted on its output itself. This is another tactic based, baked into this prompt to increase the ability for the intelligence of the AI to bring something back that's more effective. This next piece here is a bit of an optional, optional section. So if this is a really critical task you want the AI to do and you want to ensure that it's correct, this is something you can add on. And this is basically stating that if the draft you've created and you've iterated on previously based on all these steps, if that doesn't work out, 
you can create an alternate, an alternate option that you've drafted. And then you can choose between that alternate you just created and the one you've iterated on previously. If you feel like this one's better than that one based off the categories we've established, then you can choose this. And then finally, we add stopping criteria here to ensure that it stops once the rubric criteria is passed because we, want, we don't want it to overthink and over intellectualize itself and then have its intelligence degrade. So this is the base prompt that I recommend including into your system prompts for custom GPTs or GPT projects. Oh, hey, quick pause in your regular programming. Below is a free link to a 30 day AI insight series where you get 30 insights in your inbox around how to apply AI to your business and also your work. So if that's at all interesting to you, check out the link completely free. With that being said, let's dive back in. So now that we have the base prompt out of the way, I wanna give you some practical examples of how this can be applied. So here's a practical example for research. So if you have AI doing research for you, this slightly shaded section is going to be somewhat consistent across all the examples I provided. That's why it's shaded. The only difference is the task, but these two statements are gonna stay the same. So this statement's basically stating before you answer, do the critiquing categories and all the stuff associated with the rubric, and also walks through the process of drafting, critiquing, and then retaking until you give me an answer. So this is going to stay the same through all the examples. The thing that will vary here is the task. So what is the task that it's doing? In this case, it's doing research. We wanted to research a specific topic for a specific audience. This is gonna be key for this task because we're stating an audience, which is going to dictate what categories are inside of the rubric. So if I'm doing research for an analyst versus an executive, that'll vary. And down here, the lit up pieces, that's the thing that changes. And what we're doing here in this first section is we're being explicit about a very specific critique we want it to include and ensure that it doesn't miss it. And being explicit about certain critiques is another addition to this tactic that improves the quality of the response if something specifically matters to you for that task. So in this example, we want it to perform an internal check and that check is in relation to ensuring that at least three of the claims that it's given in the research are backed by credible sources. After this, we have the output. So what should come out of the AI at the end? So we wanted to have three sections, what's new, risk, next steps. And then finally, at the end, we have the rubric itself. So this is, again, another thing you can be explicit about if you want it to be um, improved for your preferences. If you don't necessarily know what the rubric should be, don't worry about it, you can have the AI do that. But in these examples, I've been explicit about the rubric because sometimes I have an idea of what I want when it comes to quote unquote excellence. So in this case for research, accuracy matters for me the claim and the source need to be matched. The recency of the data should be recent to a certain extent. It should be complete based off the different sources it looks at. And obviously it should be clear when you're writing the output. That's our first example. Our next example here is going to be about writing. In this example, we're writing three different types of things. So emails, blogs, and LinkedIn posts. Again, this is the same. So again, the only thing that changes is the task. So we're saying, I want you to write this task about this topic to this voice or in this voice. So the voice here is going to be the thing that dictates the categories in the rubric that the AI decides. So an explicit critique that we've called out here is ensuring that the hook at the, be the very beginning of the post or the blog is very strong and we're being explicit about what that means. So the first two lines are concrete, they're benefit led, they're cliche free, and they need to redo everything if that doesn't meet that criteria that I've set up for that critique. Again, we stated what the output should be, and then lastly, we've included the rubric. Again, it's explicit again. So we have a hook strength, specificity, structure, brevity, tone and fit, and skimmability. And then our final example is analysis. So here again, we have the basic structure at the top. We have the task. So I want you to recommend between A, B, and C categories for this goal with rationale and risks. So the goal, again, is going to be the thing that's going to drive the categories that sit with inside the rubric that the AI defines as excellence. So in this section, I'm also adding another part here where it's important for the AI to ensure that in the output that it provides, it's giving me the top three assumptions with confidence levels based off the analysis it's doing when it gives the final output, which is going to include a decision of why risk and then the next three steps. The critique that we're being explicit about in this one is going to be to address at least one strong counter argument internally and then redo if that's missing. And then finally, we have the explicit rubric that calls out the different items that are relevant to me that I care about in relation to this example. So those are our examples. Now, if you take nothing else from this video, this is a, I think, a good rule of thumb. So a good rule of thumb when thinking about using this technique and different ways of using it is if you just want a quick fix to improve your uh, output, that's likely a low stakes activity, you can just add the rubric only and don't be explicit about what's inside the rubric and or specific critiques. But if it's a high risk activity, that's either something public to your, um, to your consumers, uh, something that's, that needs to be factual based or it's code oriented, I'd recommend being explicit about what's inside the rubric and also adding a self critique that's explicit as well that may have one to three tracks. So that's our quick decision. And as a quick, quick recap of everything we've talked about. So when you're doing self-reflection prompting and you wanna improve the quality of GPT-5, 
there's a few things you want to do. First is when you do your rubric, you need to cap it at five to seven items because we want to avoid overthinking and degrading the intelligence. Next, we should say you should only show the final output because we want to have all the token usage baked into the inference of the model as it's thinking and not its output. Next, we want to add alternate options that I can use in high stakes situations. So this is optional, it's not all the time, but if you do have a high stakes situation where you wanna ensure that it's the highest quality output, you can try this alternative and see if you can improve the output. And then again, this is a, a optional as well for naming your category. So if there's specific categories inside the rubric that you have in mind and you wanna be explicit about, you can include that as well. And this is the simple trick that I wanted to share with you that a lot of people aren't discussing or using, but is clearly useful for this specific model which is allowing the AI to grade itself, to fix itself, and then redo its takes before it gives anything to you. It was approved by OpenAI, it's in their formal documentation, it's research backed, and also one of the leading providers cursor is using it daily for their coding. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this, reshare it with your friends. Also, as I mentioned below is a free link to a 30 day AI insight series. You get 30 days of 30 insights just like this in your inbox of how to apply AI to your business and your work. If that's at all interesting, check it out. And also while you're down there, there's another link to see if there's a good fit for us to work together. So if you're interested in working with me, check that out as well. With that being said, internet, I'll see you next time.